Good morning kids and today we're checking out a brand new video from Blackthorn Prod. I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm not sure. Uh, and again we're watching another one, one of the past the game challenges. This time six devs must make a game again without communicating, but this is called the Starving uh Starving Altus Edition. So let's hop in and check out what they can make. Welcome back to the Pass the Game Challenge. Six days must make Good a video game, here. but no communication between them is allowed. You never know what might happen. Misunderstandings between the devs is to be expected. Occasionally <laughs> crazy little gems appear. This is the series where some of the weirdest video games are brought to life. We've got flying clouds, dragons, family tree simulators, oh, gardening hey. warfare, a bunch of pigs defending their base against Lovecraftian horrors. The <laughs> list Boy. goes on. Each creator gets a few hours, then passes the project on to the next dead online. Let's just say this will end up as one of the weirdest projects in the series yet. So with that oh, said, yeah. let's get cracking and hey, it's been a while, so I'll be dead number one. They've been really quite immersed in life in drawing video. this past year, specifically figure drawing and portraits. I thought it could be interesting if you played as a portrait artist encountering strange characters in a dark city. However, rather than Ooh. the more realistic pencil drawings I've been working on, we're going for something a lot simpler, more cartoony and stylish for this particular project. Each character also has something to say while you sketch. The drawing mechanic okay. itself for now is super simple with a single brush stroke and color, but hopefully future devs can expand on the system and maybe find some way of judging a good drawing from a bad one and pay the player accordingly. <laughs> We're really excited to see where this project like this. goes. It's a really weird one and pretty open-ended. Let's pass it on to the next creator. Hey everybody, I'm Joe Sullivan. Now that my game Floromancer is out, I'm back to freelance game development. Oh, Hit me up back. with the link below and I'll prototype or make your dream game. Super unique start. I have no idea where this one is going, but I know that it will benefit from expanding the painting system. So that's where I'm going to start. I started by implementing a system to change the colors and size of the brush strokes. But then I was interrupted by an earthquake. Oh damn. That was spooky. Then I implemented the color controls, added gradients, and brush size. Nice. Now there were more options, but it still looked like Microsoft Paint. So I worked on a couple of textures that I could stretch across each brush stroke to give it a more interesting look. Now it's actually this looking like good. paint, and I think an artist could make something really cool with this. Next I made some music. To match the game I made something somber and eerie, but also calm and relaxing. Oh, that is good. That is It's good. still not fully a game yet, but it definitely gives a feeling. I'm extremely curious to see where this one goes. Contact me at the Love link it. below for cheap, high quality game development. Hey, my name is Michael, also known as Bite of Michael. I make game dev, computer science, oh, productivity, nice. career advice type videos on YouTube, all while working on my indie roguelike deck builder called Castlemancer. Now, Blackthorn Prawn invited me for a second pass the game challenge. Despite oh. my obvious lack of talent, general confidence, or both. Anyway, I got the project handoff and first impressions. Oh, thank God. It's a 2D game. The previous challenge oh, was 3D Lord. and also my very first time working on an actual 3D game, so 2D is much more my tempo. The first thing I wanted to do... 2D is a lot easier to deal with because you're dealing with what's on screen, even if you do have to uh, slide things around and all of that. ...was to actually gamify the game. It didn't seem like there was any goal or target. So I added an XP bar that shows your current level. As you create more drawings, you will level up from a novice to the king's personal artist. I even oh. added a little prestige system so that if you pass the max level of 10, then you just continue to progress. Additionally, it needed some system for drawing verification. Now, obviously art is subjective, but originally I could continually give empty drawings to all of the patrons. So I added a system where you had to draw at least a single stroke and then a formula such that as you draw more strokes, you actually gain more XP, therefore encouraging more elaborate drawings rather than just spamming single lines. Now, I'm not a very good artist, yeah. so I wanted an option to help me learn. So I also added a trace mode that essentially overlays the current character on the canvas to help me get better at digital drawing, which oh, I yeah, thought that's was useful. fun. The other key feature I wanted- I wasn't meaning that as like a negative, I mean that is really useful. ...on an ad was some sort of backstory or context. I created this initial thought bubble at the beginning of the game that tries to establish a backstory 
while also leaving it open enough for the other devs to fill in. Basically, there's some really depressing event going on, and the player has been hired as a beginner artist to help document it, all in a broadly medieval setting. And lastly, I made the patrons all come up randomly and repeat so that the game is infinitely replayable, plus some bug fixes, and that's about when I ran out of time. I'm super excited to see where the other devs take this. Big thanks to Blackthorn Prod again for the invite to this Pass the Game Challenge. If you like game dev and tech sort of videos, consider mm. checking out my YouTube channel over at Bite of Michael, and wishlist my roguelike game about wizards called Castlemancer over on Steam. <laughs> Thanks, and fun. see you later. We've made a completely free game making course that you can check out with the link in the description. It will teach you the incredible Unity game engine by making a stylish city builder, a fast paced dodging arcade game, and a really mm -hmm. cool fireball throwing simulator. So if you've always wanted to make your own video games, if you've been inspired watching these developers cook and feel like, hey, I would also love to make games, then these are your very first steps that you can take right now. The link is in the description, guys. And with that said, let's continue yeah, the project. On. So on to the next step. Hey everyone, we go. I'm back for my four. second challenge. For those who don't know oh, me, I'm a freelance game developer. I've been using Unity for around 15 years now, and here are some of the companies I'm currently working for. The first things I noticed oh, when playing the game is the scene hierarchy is very messy. Organizing the hierarchy is actually a great way to get familiar with the structure of a project. I also added a brush selector that allows you to change the paint stroke used. Now, for the painting layers, I thought of a solution that would both fix it and also add more interesting effects, render textures. But actually, I'm going for something very huh? specific, and that's painting with particles. Here, I added a brush with particles. It doesn't really paint, but once I switch the render texture camera to uninitialized, we get this nice painterly stroke to it. All that was left was fix an issue Ooh. with the paint canvas background and disable the line render paint strokes on mouse up. And that's it. With the new paint technique done, I added some hmm. brushes with particles. I even combined both particles and line renders into a single brush, resulting in these interesting effects. I hope the next devs that will have more artistic cool. skills than me and will be able to take advantage of this technique to make really cool brushes. So that's it. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Hey, it's Lighthoof Dryden. I'm currently working on finishing the game that I was making for the last Blackthorn Prod competition. It's a Victorian side scrolling roguelike called Disinherited, and I'm trying to finish it in 100 days and making devlogs every week. Come and check it out. Okay, oh. so right away, I'm loving the painting aspect of this game, but I feel like we need a little bit more of a goal. The XP bar is a good start, but there's more than one way to judge a painting. So I built a system that monitors everything you're doing in your drawing. It tracks stroke count like before, but also the average length of time per stroke, the average width, average opacity, average number of strokes that used gradients, and oh. the number of colors used in the drawing. Okay. I also okay. wanted the NPCs to be able to react to you. So I created a request system. Now when they appear, they randomly choose a style. There are nine of them right now, and mm. each one has three possible intro lines that hint at what they want. Then I wrote a bunch of response lines that they can use to evaluate your painting. <laughs> An abomination. Never paint again. Wow, that's cold. I feel like we're supposed to be drawing the person, but there's no system in place for judging that. So instead, I just created another layer to the request system, where they give you a subject to paint in addition to the style. I put in 65 mm. options to prompt your creativity, and it'd be easy to add so many more. Then I felt like you should be able to immortalize your creations. This took a while to figure out, but eventually I figured out how to make it so that every painting you give is saved as a PNG file. Then, just oh, to add to good. the surreal vibe, I made this simple shader that can add your paintings to the texture of these humans in the background. Maybe it's too weird, but I think it's kind of fun to influence the world like that, and that it makes me want to add funny. a little extra care to each painting. Last, I love the color palette that we have, but it's pretty limited. I replaced the gradient toggle with the ability to just choose two colors. And now we have room for three times as many options. And finally, I moved the new button because I kept hitting it by accident and deleting my masterpieces. Guys, if you're enjoying the video, that make sure annoying. to like and subscribe to the channel. It's a huge support. And now onto the final dev. Hopefully the project stays on track. Hopefully it ends really well. Hey, what I'm Rai, and I guess I'm gonna be finishing this game, which well, is something Rai. that I'm usually okay. not very good at, but don't worry, I got this. First thing I notice when playing the game is that I'm a little bit dumb. I need a painting that goes with everything. Paint me a god. I don't think like it. I don't understand. I mean, I could tell that the NPCs had parameters they wanted me to meet with their paintings, but I had to look into the code to actually tell what they wanted. So I updated some of their requests and added some negative and positive feedback after you give them the painting. And that'll hopefully give you some pretty obvious hints on what the NPC wants you to do. Mm. The second thing Simply I noticed abysmal. is that there isn't really a goal. <laughs> I'm just endlessly creating paintings for this ungrateful child who, for some reason, doesn't like any of my paintings. Oh, man. Which can Come get a now. little frustrating. So I thought, how can I motivate 
motivate the player to endlessly create paintings for this annoying child? And I mean, there's really only one answer, money. With enough money, you money. can convince anyone to do anything, even paint for this horrible child. So if you do a good job with your painting, you'll get a tip. And eventually, after a lot of painting, you'll become extremely wealthy. But there's a problem Whoa. because when I think of an artist, I think poor, starving, poverty. Usually I don't think that they have billions of dollars in the bank. So to give this <laughs> game the immersive experience of being a struggling artist, I decided to give the player financial problems. Nothing too serious. You're just in debt for things like your fridge breaking down, breaking the Geneva Convention, oh, killing what? a man. What? I'm sure these are all experiences that we've all been through. And now the game really makes you- The man wants a bribe. Holy sh- feel like a struggling artist. The only problem is that debt isn't really that fun. Right now, the gameplay is just you endlessly trying to pay off your debt before you eventually go bankrupt. So I decided uh. to give the player a goal of making $500. I made some changes to the message at the start of the game to reflect the goal, hopefully without ruining someone's really well thought out story. Anyway, if you can save no $500, you win the game and you can escape the stress of your everyday life. I also made your level a multiplier to the amount of money you get from tips, just to make it That's a little good. bit easier to reach your goal. And with that done, I think the game has a pretty good gameplay loop. I spent the rest of my time on the project trying to fix bugs and polish some of the mechanics. For example, you might have noticed that the undo button button is no longer there. Okay, to be fair, it wasn't working when I got the project and I couldn't find any functionality ah. for it in the code. So I'm guessing that the button was added, but it never actually worked. And I'm going to be honest, I don't really know how to fix this. So I had to make the tough decision and remove the button. It would be really embarrassing so if it was it. working before it. All I had to do was hit a toggle button or something. Anyway, I finished my work on the game by adding a pause menu and a main menu. No need to compliment me for this great Easy. UI design. I mean, it <laughs> speaks for itself. And that's pretty much everything I did on the project. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. And hopefully I didn't ruin anybody's ideas. That would be bad. No, no I think it's okay. Please don't make anything too colorful. First of all, I love that the kept the atmosphere, kept the style. Yes, I, I was really hoping somebody was gonna do a money thing where you get paid more for a painting that they like. I was thinking mm -hmm. it would be interesting to be able to use that money to buy future brushes or even expand your color palette. Maybe you have it be kind of limited at the beginning, but then you uh, get yeah. access to more as you go. Okay, we're doing tips. Ooh, okay. I like this new kind of formatting. Paint me a monkey. Nice little banana there. Monkey. Banana. Paint me a wine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't overdo it with the pigment. Okay. Paintings are persisting now. Give. Ooh, that was a big tip. Thickest oh, brush. Wow. Okay, so we gotta make paint me a bear. This kind of looks like a bear. It's like oh, the nose of a bear. Okay, I see. I see it now. That you, you know, you just have to follow their instructions. That's fun. I like. I like kind of what they added. Something else fun that was taking the drawings that you have and being able to save them as PNGs. So yes. hypothetically, there there could be some interesting ways to take those and use them as textures in the game. I mean, I sort of did a little bit of it, With but the I think there's a yeah, lot of yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. The people all become, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> all the people become my previous drawings? Okay, that's, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there's a lot more potential there for texturing objects in the game or, or something like that, I don't know. Give me something fast. A little stretch. Okay, paint me a desert. Okay. And let's, let's just have a little cactus there. Cactus. <laughs> The drawing is already really cool. I love how style. Wow, so you really love that desert. Just you guys made it. The paintbrush, the strokes, the effects. Really impressive, really cool stuff. Ooh. Ooh. Now you can really make it bleed. Oh. Perhaps that the, the characters themselves, they have a story behind, and they not just want to draw their, pro, uh, their portrait, but perhaps want you to draw something specific to them. And then depending on what you give them, they give you a reward. Oh, nice. Somebody added in like specific responses. That's, I was hoping for that. I love the brush off the canvas. So this was almost going that route, and I can see it going that route, where it's like- Wait, it, how would you paint a starry night if you can't sort colors? Art roguelike. So if you like shorten the timer, and then each person is essentially like an encounter, Afterwards, maybe you get to choose, like, every time I use the color red or something, I oh. get more tips. The next encounter, maybe you unlock a thicker brush or something like that. This is really nice, guys. I would, of course, love to be able to explore this, this does like, be a fun game. Victorian town in the background, but I just so appreciate all the devs' work, what they did to expand on this concept. They actually turned this little painting game 
It's an actual game that's. I don't know why, it, uh, why it's been doing that. I like it. I like it a lot. It's very charming, and I like. It like shows the links to other videos before the videos even. Like that. At that like point. all your drawings become the people just walking in the background. Great job, really. It is the first developer. It's a, it's a pleasure to see this. Really, amazing stuff. Good job, everyone. Good job. Part three of the 100 devs make a game without communicating is coming up, guys. It's currently cooking, so make sure to like and subscribe to the oh, channel yeah. so you don't miss that, as well as many other incredible game dev collaboration videos that are in the making. We are this guy super is always excited, fun to guys. Check out. Also, check out the free game making course if you also want to learn how to make video games. It's completely free, and the link is in the description. With that said, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned, and we'll see you really soon. Cheers. And with that, that's going to be the end of today's video. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below. And I'll see you kids next time when we click back on. This is Fox, signing out. Peace.